Our first reading today is from Psalm 139, verses 1 through 14. O Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down, when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from far away. You search out my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, O Lord, you know it completely. You hem me in from behind and before and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It's so high I can't attain it. Where can I go from your spirit? Or where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend to heaven, you're there. If I make my bed in shoal, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and settle at the farthest limits of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me in your right hand shall hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness will cover me, and night wraps itself around me, even the darkness is not dark to you. The night is as bright as the day, for darkness is as light to you. For it was you who formed my inward parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works, that I know very well. Our second reading comes from the fifth chapter of the Gospel of Matthew, verses 14 through 16. You are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hid. People don't light a lamp and put it under a bushel basket. Rather, they put it on the nightstand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that may, they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. Word of God, word of life. Beloved people of God, grace to you and peace from our Lord and Savior Jesus. Amen. Created to be authentic. This is the second theme that Prince of Peace youth and thousands of other young people will be exploring next month when they come together in New Orleans for the ELCA National Youth Gathering. What comes to mind when you hear the word? authentic. The Cambridge Dictionary says, if something is authentic, it is real, true, or what people say it is. An authentic 1920s dress, authentic Italian food, the authentic account of an eyewitness. According to dictionary.com, authentic means representing one's true nature or beliefs. And Merriam-Webster defines authentic as being actually and exactly what is claimed. I learned something else from Merriam-Webster. This online dictionary chose authentic as its word of the year in 2023 a designation determined by analyzing page hits and popular searches to its website. Merriam-Webster noted that while there has been a high volume of searches pertaining to the word authentic for several years, 2023 saw a substantial increase thanks to stories and conversations about artificial intelligence, celebrity culture, identity, and social media. No doubt the political climate in this country and the all important conversation about truth and facts also contributed to the online flurry. I think it's safe to say the vast majority of us value authenticity. And yet, 
to live authentically, to be true to who we really are, is not always easy. There is risk involved, and sometimes a heavy price to be paid when we are willing to state our honest opinion, stand up to what we believe in, and show up as we truly are. Some of you may have seen the obituary for 85-year-old Edward Thomas Ryan that ran in the Albany New York Times Union a couple of weeks ago and that has been widely circulated around the world. I'd like to read his obituary to you. As published, it's very long. So I've taken the liberty of making a few edits. It's still long, but out of respect for Mr. Ryan, and so that you get a real sense of who he was, I didn't want to cut any more. So here it is. Retired Colonel Edward Thomas Ryan, who lived at Executive House Apartments in Albany, New York, has died. Till his recent move, he was a lifelong resident of the city of Rensselaer. He was a brother to Rosemary, Cornelius, Joan, Bernadette, and Joseph. He is survived by many nieces and nephews. He was a member of St. John's Church, Rensselaer, and a retired fireman in the city of Rensselaer. He was one of the owners and founders of radio station WHRL-FM, Albany, New York. Also among his many talents, Mr. Ryan was a chef at the East Greenbush American Legion Post 1231. Mr. Ryan had a Bachelor of Arts degree in business from North American University and a Bachelor of Science degree from SCU. He was a member of the International Association of Firefighters. He was a life member of the Vietnam Veterans of America, past New York State Chairman of the Vietnam Veterans Agent Orange Committee for the American Legion, and a past commander of Melvin Rhodes Post 1231 American Legion in East Greenbush, New York. He was a retired colonel with the 10th Brigade located on South Lake Avenue, New York City. Colonel Ryan's awards and commendations include the National Defense Service Medal and the Defense of Liberty Medal for his contribution to the state following the attack on America on September 11, 2001. He also received the New York Conspicuous Service Medal and from the Division of Military and Naval Affairs, the Commander's Citation for Service Above and Beyond the Call. As to his wishes, Mr. Ryan was enrolled in the anatomical gift program at Albany Medical College. After their task is completed, his body will be cremated and his ashes returned to the family for interment. He will be, be buried in Kinderhook, New York. The funeral will be private for family only with no memorial services of any kind. Edward wanted to share the following. I must tell you one more thing. I was gay all my life, through grade school, through high school, through college, through life. I was in a loving and caring relationship with Paul Cavignaro of North Greenbush. He was the love of my life. We had 25 great years together. Paul died in 1994 from a medical procedure gone wrong. I'll be buried next to Paul. I'm sorry for not having the courage to come out as gay. I was afraid of being ostracized by family, friends, and coworkers. Seeing how people like me were treated, I just couldn't do it. Now that my secret is known, I will forever rest 
in peace. According to an article in the Washington Post, Mr. Ryan had come out to a select few, one of whom who was his niece, Linda Sargent. Some 10 to 15 years ago, she and her uncle had finished catering an event at the American Legion when Mr. Ryan said he needed to tell her something. He was gay, and he had been closeted for decades. Sargent wasn't surprised. She hugged her uncle and told him she loved him. She had always loved him, and she always would. What a gift. I'm glad that Mr. Ryan lived a full life, that he knew the joy of family and friends, and that he was loved by his partner and accepted by those who knew the secret he kept from the rest of the world. But just imagine how much richer and happier his life could have been had he been able to live a more authentic life, true to himself in every aspect, and free from his understandable fear of judgment and rejection. Michael Casey, an Albany native, helped circulate Mr. Ryan's story through a Facebook post that included a path made of multicolored cups leading to a pride flag. He wrote, this is why we celebrate gay pride so visibly, because maybe one day everyone will be able to live their life not being afraid of what others think or say. What a wonderful world it would be if each of us could claim the words of the psalmist. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Imagine this truth seeping deep into our bones and permeating our hearts, enabling us to love ourselves as we are and to love others as they are. Remembering that regardless of sexual orientation, gender, education or income. Every human being is fearfully and wonderfully made. A one-of-a-kind creation with unique gifts to offer the world. When I learned that the passage from Matthew 5 had been selected to accompany the theme created to be authentic, I had some hesitancy. It wasn't as obvious a choice, at least to me, as the texts that were paired with the themes for the other days of the youth gathering. But as I reflected on the passage, the connection became evident. If we look closely at the text, we see that Jesus does not say to the disciples, you will be polite to all. No, Jesus speaks in the present tense. You are the light of the world. It's a statement of fact. There are no preconditions, no requirements to fulfill, no changes that need to be made. You are the light of the world, Jesus says, here and now, just as you are. In her book, Sermon on the Mount, A Beginner's Guide to the Kingdom of Heaven, Amy Jill Levine writes, Once the disciples recognize that they are right, they also recognize that their role is to shine so that others can be right. Jesus states the obvious. A city built on a hill cannot be hid. His followers followers are to become like that city, a refuge, a home, a place where there is light and love and compassion. Friends, you are the light. So let your light shine, trusting that God will use it to 
light the way for others, that they too will come to know God's deep, Raise your hand abiding, if you can hear me. and unconditional Yay. love. I'd like to At close the outset, with a prayer uh, let's that was show our appreciation to Ryan and gathering. Milt, who came and here early to help us set up, and to Chris Thornton, who you do not see exactly. because he's inside uh, uh, running the oh live God. stream. But if you turn around, you and, and you'll see that there are a couple of cameras out here so that we uh, can still share this worship with those who are uh, joining us online. Everybody turn around to the back one back there. Look like you're looking at Dorothy Chapman, but wave at the camera and say hello to everybody who's joining us online this day. We're grateful that we can because be worshiping together with creation. all, uh, everyone, uh, everywhere on this day. What a beautiful day for us we pray to be gathered outside uh, uh, under uh, this beautiful sky uh, to celebrate this worship service together. Amen.